वेलकम टू दिस स्पेशल एपिसोड ऑफ सी एन एस डायलॉग्स फॉर सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट विच इज अ स्पेशल सी एन एस सीरीज विच फोकस इज थॉट प्रोवोकिंग एंड इंसाइटफुल इंटरव्यूज फ्रॉम लीडर्स टू एक्सेलरेट प्रोग्रेस टू अचीव द सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट गोल्स एंड वन ऑफ दीज गोल्स इज टू एंड एड्स बाई ट्वेंटी थर्टी एंड वी ऑल्सो हैव द यू एन एड्स टारगेट ऑफ नाइनटीन नाइनटी नाइनटी let us hear today from our very very special guest and we are indeed honored to have with us the honorable health minister of rwanda uh, and right now we are on site from the 20th international conference on aids and infectious uh, sexually transmitted infections in africa the biggest aids conference of africa and uh, the honorable health minister dr dain gashumbe has kindly consented to be here and welcome uh, dr D uh, what can i call you uh, gashum uh, gashumbe dain dain is good dain is good okay <laughs> and uh, we are delighted to know that you yourself are a doctor i am a pediatrician you are a pediatrician and uh, rwanda is a beautiful country and uh, from what we have heard about the health statistics i think rwanda is doing very well and why not when we have women at the helm of affairs things are bound to happen so would you share with our listeners how have you got about addressing the epidemic of aids in rwanda um the government of rwanda has uh, opted for a politics that is fully decentralized fully focusing on the people from the community level and uh, this was right after the genocide because during the genocide we've lost everything we've lost everything from human lives uh, million of people killed but also infrastructure destroyed hospitals schools even the, the hope the hope and the, the the desire to continue to live was lost So with the new leadership of Rwanda, the leadership of President Kagame, we've seen a change, a radical change. A vision that is really translated into actions. A vision that is there to serve the people. That when we started a real politics for the people of Rwanda. And one of the most important thing I want to highlight is that the community every citizen of rwanda contributes to solutions mm -hmm. and that has led to a high level of ownership of everything that is being done for the people of rwanda we don't impose we don't decide on their behalf everyone take part of the discussion everyone take part of the assessment of issues within the community where we live and uh, we propose solutions and the leaders are there to help vulnerable people leaders are there to lead the, the the vision and to make sure that it is being done and also apart from this decentralization we've built a health system that is very strong that is starting from the community we have a workforce we call community health workers those are people the government invested in these people are not uh, medical doctors they don't have any medical background but they were trained on how to uh, to do prevention because infectious diseases were really killing people right after the genocide and we invested in these people in terms of uh, prevention of diseases but also treatment of uh, modern diseases like malaria like diarrhea like pneumonia and also providing family planning so we built our system from the community level and that has led to the success we have that has led to reduction of maternal mortality and uh, Rwanda was among the few countries that have achieved the MDGs 4 and 5 on time and also uh, another uh, element i want to highlight that has really contributed to the achievement you are celebrating today is the uh, financial accessibility mm -hmm. to uh, medical care mm -hmm. with the creation establishment of uh, health insurance community based health insurance where every citizen of rwanda is contributing for 3 to 4 usd per year and the government subsidizing 
government covering all the medical costs for vulnerable people that constitute 16 percent of our people this financial capability to pay for medical services has also contributed to the reduction of uh, uh, maternal mortality and uh, also stabilization of uh, hiv another strategy we've put in place is integration of services because after having built a strong maternal and child health system. We integrated HIV, like uh, counseling, mm. testing, but also treatment within the existing system that was strengthened. That how I can explain the... Okay, and um, uh, how much of it comes from the domestic financing or domestic funding? The, the funds for... Yeah, the, the government of Rwanda is... Uh, allocating 16.5% of its budget to the health sector. Okay. We've actually overachieved the Abuja Declaration. Mm. So that shows that leaders in Rwanda understand that investing in health is uh, very important, is critical. Because when you, we invest in people, you have a wealthy population that can contribute to the development of the country. That is part of what is explaining the economic growth we are seeing in Rwanda. Uh, can you share with our uh, viewers uh, where Rwanda stands uh, in terms of the 1990 target of the uh, We've overachieved the two last 90s, meaning 98% of uh, HIV people, HIV positive people are on treatment. Mm -hmm. And the good thing is that they respect appointment, they have a good adherence, and the consequence, the positive consequence is that the, the, the viral load suppression is very good. We are at 90%, close to 91 actually. So we still have to work on uh, uh, testing and awareness so that every Rwandan who is HIV positive knows his status. So. For these first 90, we are at 83.8% and we are working very hard around uh, campaigns, uh, community campaigns and awareness using uh, ICT, using uh, media, social media, to ensure that every Rwandan uh, go for test and knows his status and get treatment. We recently also initiated the self-testing, mm -hmm. and we hope that this will really contribute to, to, to improving the, the first 90. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, community health workers must be playing a big role in this, as you said, because they are the ones who actually go into the community. Yeah, they, they, they are the ones acting at the grassroots, grassroots. level, mm -hmm. household level. Mm -hmm. They are collaborating with their neighbors. They have the trust of the community, the entire communities, because they are elected from the community. Mm -hmm. So they are really opinion leaders and active members of the health sector. Mm -hmm. And we, we commend the, 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 the work they've been doing. And uh, they are part of our success. They are active uh, contributors to the success of uh, the Rwandan uh, health sector. Are uh, many of them women? 66% of them are women. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. That mm. is great. And uh, what about uh, mother to child transmission? PMTCT. PMTCT is another area that uh, I would say is doing great in Rwanda, mm. thanks to the collaboration of the civil society, especially the foundation of our first lady. Mm -hmm. She has launched a huge campaign more than 15 years ago, the mm. PMTCT campaign. And this has led Rwanda to of achieving the target we had set for ourselves. We had set uh, the target at 2% uh, of transmission. Mm -hmm. Today we are less than 2%, we are 1.5% okay, so of transmission. So by, by which year do you expect to, to make it to yes, zero? Yes, it is feasible. It is, it is feasible. How long do you think it will take? <laughs> we have this in our uh, health sector strategic plan, mm -hmm. uh, 20, 17 2024 oh, okay. so we hope that by then we will make it happen is tuberculosis a problem with people living and people living with hiv because globally there are still 250,000 people died of tuberculosis yes it is across the world as you know tuberculosis is a co-infection mm -hmm. to hiv but in rwanda we adopted the our guidelines is like 
for every HIV positive person, we test, we screen for TB and mm -hmm. vice versa. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't say tuberculosis is a huge problem in Rwanda, but it is still there, but it's also stabilized and the adherence is very good. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, what is happening? Are they uh, for latent TB treatment? Because now there are UNHLM guideline, uh, guidelines also for putting so many people on la uh, TB preventive therapy, mm -hmm. so that latent TB doesn't... Yeah, we so follow the same guideline, the okay. WHO uh, guideline, mm -hmm. and I would say that so far so good. We have to keep the momentum, we have to keep respecting these guidelines. I would say it's, it's a really not a huge problem and we need to, to respect these guidelines and uh, not take for granted what we've achieved to avoid that we have uh, many cases of uh, resistance because that's the worst things that yes, can happen yes, in yes. a country. Okay, mm. Yes, so I'm coming to that. What about uh, MDRTB treatment? Uh, it, yeah, we have also this treatment mm. and uh, hopefully there are not many cases. Okay. So I would say also the TB program is doing good. good. Mm. Okay. Uh, what about other non-communicable diseases? Is diabetes a problem here because diabetes is a worldwide phenomenon? and it impacts the uh, treatment of uh, people living with HIV and also TB. So yeah, like uh, in many other countries, the demographic trend of diseases is changing mm -hmm. because as we have managed to, 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 to overcome uh, infectious diseases and uh, reduce the neonatal mortality and the maternal mortality and so on, We've expanded the life expectancy of Rwandans. In 1994, the life expectancy was at 28 years. Today we are at almost 67. Okay. So with this, we see more cases of non-communicable diseases because we have many uh, aged people. So this is a priority now. Mm -hmm. Our focus now is also on non-communicable diseases. We mm -hmm give some examples, diabetes, cancer, mm. cardiovascular diseases, mm. and we opted for prevention because oh, prevention yes. is uh, cheaper and is uh, easier. Yeah. So one of the strategies we've put in place in Rwanda, an innovative uh, strategy, is the Cafri Day. Okay. Two, uh, two times a month, mm. Mm. we go around, we stop our cars, we oh. park our cars, we exercise, mm. we walk around, mm and uh, we meet at uh, ground, a big space, and we exercise together, but we also take advantage of this moment as a sector to provide messages around non-communicable disease to raise awareness of our communities, but also to screen mm. with the support of private sector clinics mm. and hospitals, but also public sector uh, clinics. We screen our people and also we remind them that with the community health-based insurance they have, they can, they have the right to perform one uh, checkup, complete checkup, every year, once a year. Mm -hmm. So this is a moment we cherish very much, the Caffrey Day, and it is happening across the country in mm -hmm. all the district. Mm -hmm. So prevention matters yes. for us when it comes to non-communicable diseases, but we are also uh, putting much effort on treatment. Today, Rwanda has a beautiful radiotherapy center mm -hmm. here in Kigali. And uh, this is a huge achievement in terms of taking care of our people who suffer from cancer. We have also uh, chemotherapy mm -hmm. and surgical treatment of cancers in most of our uh, teaching hospitals, including Butaro Hospital, which is in the northern province of Rwanda, with the support of partners in health mm -hmm. and Harvard University. What about smoking or tobacco use? Is uh, is there a lot of smoking here uh, or, or chewing tobacco? I do not know if there is chewing tobacco here. We have a very strict regulations okay. on uh, tobacco mm. and uh, restrictions mm. and uh, close and strict follow-up, mm. but we have Rwandans that are smoking like in other countries. Yes. Mm. But I wouldn't say it's a huge problem, but we need to watch out, we need to keep mm. Uh, talking to our people, we need to keep educating them. Mm. Um, so we are very strict when it comes to tobacco because we know the uh, consequences in terms of uh, infection, uh, respiratory infections, uh, infections. And um, we have recently, I think one year ago, we have banned the shisha 
Oh, so the been, was it's come banned from, okay. in Rwanda. I think okay. Rwanda was among the okay. first countries to, okay. to ban use mm. of shisha. Mm. And what about e-cigarettes and... Uh, we uh, don't allow e-cigarettes in okay. Rwanda. It's okay. not uh, allowed. Okay. But we are following closely on the researchers around mm -hmm. uh, e-cigarette versus uh, uh, tobacco yes. and yeah, mm -hmm. to see what is less harmful. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, both... Uh, product are, uh, yes. uh, yeah, they, yeah, they are bad. They're bad. They're yeah. bad because they contain nicotine yeah. and yeah. They, they are linked with the addiction. They are bad mm -hmm. for the, to, for the, for the, uh, with, uh, when it comes to resp respiratory in infection. But we are following up on researchers on uh, different opinions for, to do our own assessment on this issue. That's, that's yeah. And is it uh, common in youngsters also, this uh, smoking? Shisha is, has been it's banned. banned. Oh. Yeah, banned. But is smoking totally. common in the youngsters, adolescents? No, 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 not here. No, no. no. Okay. Mm. Uh, your message to the women from Ekasa 2019, or from this 20th con conference, especially to the women. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Rwanda is, uh, I think it's the first country that is... Uh, promoting women, that is empowering women. Our leader, our president is very gender sensitive and mm -hmm. believes in capability of women mm -hmm. to do things properly. And mm -hmm. this is translated into numbers, but also quality of work women are doing here in Rwanda. Mm -hmm. We have 41% of women in the government, in cabinet, ministers and uh, state ministers. Mm -hmm. We have 61% uh, of uh, women in the parliament. Rwanda is the first country mm -hmm. with a bigger number of uh, women. Mm -hmm. But we don't look at numbers only. We look at the quality of work they are doing. Mm -hmm. And um, when you look at all the achievements we've made, women have been part of this uh, wonderful work. And I want to my message to women uh, participants to ICASA is that women are capable and when you invest in women, you invest in the whole family, you invest in your nation, so women are great people. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you, Minister. Friends, in this episode of CNS Dialogues for Sustainable Development, we were in conversation with Dr. Diane Gashumba, who is the Health Minister of Republic of Rwanda and we were on we are on site from the 20th International Conference of on AIDS and sexually transmitted infections in Africa thank you so much thank you very much thank you, thank you. Thank you.